Hey everybody, welcome back to Hard for Games. I'm your host, Tony, and today we're taking a look at a sample cartridge on the original Game Boy a Final Fantasy Adventure. Games are hard, they're hard for games. AKA Seiken Densetsu, AKA the prequel The Secret of Mana, the first game in the Mana series before everything just fell apart a decade or so ago. First things first, the owner sent this to me because he wanted to see if there were any differences between what was on this and the actual retail release of the game. And I want to get this out as early in the episode as possible. There are no differences. The ROM on this is a retail-ready game. So what was this used for then? Well, as I mentioned, it is a sample cartridge, so it was probably used for some sort of marketing, whether it be to a retailer, a reviewer, a magazine, what have you. These could have been sent out as a sort of uh, precursor to the finalized production version of the game. So regardless of the lack of differences, I still wanted to show it off just because I'm a huge Mana fanboy and it's just not something you see every day, so why not try to document it on the show? And Hard for Games has shown off a few Game Boy Advance prototypes, but this is actually the first original Game Boy uh, sort of prototype style dev sample cart that we've had on the show. So let's take a look at the cartridge itself. Now, unlike the GBA carts that we've taken a look at that use flash memory, this uses an EP-ROM, or I've sometimes heard it called an EP-ROM. I've always called it an EP-ROM. Basically, it's where the game itself is stored. And one other nice thing about this sort of development sample cart is that unlike other prototypes we've taken a look at, it's not the size of the goddamn moon. You don't have like a, a board sticking like a foot out of it. It's just self-contained within the Game Boy cartridge shell. Although I guess when you look closely, the shell is just ever so slightly bigger than a retail Game Boy game. Now notice the sticker on the EP-ROM here. EP-ROMs can be erased by exposing them to ultraviolet light. So if you have one with a flimsy sticker that's about to fall off, cover up its shame because you don't want that thing getting erased. And if you see one for sale, like on eBay or whatever, without a sticker on it, just exposed and you kind of see in it, uh, buyer beware. Uh, maybe talk to the, the seller, say, hey, is the information still on there? Have you tested it recently? Can you cover it up? You know, take some precautions just because they're easily erased. I don't know how much UV light it would take, you know, normally you'd like blast it with UV light and it would erase it, but I don't know if it's, you know, sitting near a window or whatever, uh, what amount over what time would erase it. I've never bothered to or wanted to find out, so, but just as a precaution and as a warning, be careful. So the only other differences are just minor variations in the shell. On the back side here, you can see the board through the plastic. And on the side, you can kind of see a separation between the front and the back. Now, that's pretty much it, but before I go, I did want to say that if you haven't checked this game out, definitely do so. It's a primitive version of Secret of Mana. That's kind of the way I like to think about it. With even worse NPC ally AI. So, for example, your ally in Secret of Mana, you know, they'll help you out, they'll fight, they'll cast spells, and then, you know, once in a while they get stuck behind, like, a bush or something like that, and you have to backtrack and go get them, and they follow you again. In this, your allies will just be like shooting spells into a wall and like you'll be lucky if it hits any enemy like that. That's how like basic it is, <laughs> but it was also for the original Game Boy. Like every, every, I remember originally when I played this years ago, every once in a while my like NPC ally would get a shot off on a bad guy, and I'd be like, oh, damn, no, that, was, that was helpful. But it was very inconsistent. But it has enough of that mana charm that if you've got an itch, this will scratch it for sure. And it's interesting because it's also closer to its Final Fantasy roots because it's closer to when Secret of Mana deviated off of Final Fantasy, so it has a little bit more of that sort of Final Fantasy element to it, hence it being called Final Fantasy Adventure. They could get away with that in the West because it, it kind of made sense. And there's also been some remakes over the years, so if you're looking for something a little more updated than a Game Boy game, 
there are other options. So that said, I appreciate all of you watching and thank you very much to the individual that sent this to me to test. I definitely enjoyed checking it out for you. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe, hit that notification button so you know when our videos are coming out and we will see you all next time. I'm gonna take this and move it far away. Take this, bring it close. Cheers. Move it away from the liquid and we are safe once again. See you guys later. Thank you again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like and a share and we will see you guys next time.